Hello, Paul here from Dusty Workbench and today another video about the Flatmaster. You may have seen some of my other videos about the Flatmaster or this might be the first one. Uh, one thing I did notice and by the, by the comments is that I probably did not explain some features about the Flatmaster well enough or get into as enough detail. So in today's video I want to look at answering those questions as best as I can. <laughs> Keep in mind, I'm not an expert <laughs> with the Flatmaster. We've had it for close to, I guess, been a couple years now. Uh, we do use it very regularly for a lot of our projects uh, for certain parts. There are certainly other things that you can do it that we don't use for uh, use it for. So, but I'm going to try and answer those questions that others have because they have different projects that they would like to use the Flatmaster for that we don't use. So I'm hoping to answer those questions here today. So to do that, though, we have a we have this flat master placed in this little cart uh, that we made uh, that has a, a frame around it. Now this frame is not functional, it's more of just to that we have a work surface when we're not using the flat master. That's the reason why we have this. Uh, but it's not giving any kind of support when you're doing uh, passing a wood over. It's because the flat master is actually just a little slightly higher in the outside frame that we made here. And so what I'm going to do uh, because of that frame, uh, it kind of restricts us from using the fence properly that we purchased. We bought this fence, uh, but we can of course use it with it being in this table. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the whole flat master out, and I'm going to show you some interesting features you can have with this fence as well. There's actually some more parts of this. This is just one part. And uh, we also will talk about the adjustment for the depth of cut as well as the adjustment for the height of the cylinder, which are two different things. Let me get this out of the, out of the cart. I'll put it on something that's a little bit more, that exposes the machine a little bit better. We can get a little bit closer, get the camera a little bit closer as well. And uh, we'll explain some of the other features and answer your questions. Okay, so we've got the flat master taken out of the table so you can have a better look at it. And of course, saying, staying true to our name, it is, uh, it is dusty. <laughs> so, um, essentially, you have your, your top. It's just one big steel plate. Uh, there is an MDF filler underneath it uh, as well. And I don't think you can see that there, but there is... So an MDF board uh, in here as well underneath the steel plate that gives it some extra rigidity for the uh, for the top. Plus it has these angle irons on the on the edges that give it some strength as well. So you keep it so it keeps it all nice and flat. Hence the name Flat Master. <laughs> and then you have the uh, cylinder here in between, inside, of course. Very straightforward, just a long, this is a 30 inch cylinder as well. And I just noticed that the screw here, for some reason, just came out. Not sure why that happened. I guess it came loose. I'll have to uh, adjust that. But the, oh, that's, I heard a nut fall, so that's probably what I, that's probably what it came off. So I'll have to uh, make sure I get that tightened up. Now then down below we have the motor, it kind of came with the switch connected and the wiring so all we had to do is plug it in you have your on and off. Uh, this is a three quarter horsepower motor and uh, it's got more than enough power for this 30 inch um, cylinder. And of course then you have the pulley system that's in there, essentially a pulley on a belt. A pulley on the motor and of course a pulley on the cylinder and we have the uh, link type belt that, we, that came with it as well so you can adjust the length of your of your belt and then get it on there quite easily and then essentially the other part is that you have these uh these bearings on each end of the cylinder again both ends <clears throat> And then you have your cylinder height adjusters. You just have to loosen these screws and then you could 
uh, bring the cylinder up or down with, uh, with this knob here. And now the reason why it's a little bit complicated to bring it up because you have to loosen four screws and then adjust your height is because you, you shouldn't have to do this very often. Uh, I do have to adjust it now, so I mean, that's why I was happy to be able to just pull it out for now and then and do the adjustment, but um, to make it a little bit easier, but I could have done it in the table as well. But yeah, you don't have to set that height once you've had it set. It should, unless of course with the vibrations and with time, you may need to readjust it. But generally, if it's good and tight and it's in the right height, you don't have to touch it anymore. So um, that makes it quite convenient because you're, you're not constantly having to adjust the depth and height uh, for your depth of cut. Again, I'll get into how you do the depth of cut or how that works with this. Okay, so the question, one of the questions was how do you adjust the height of the cylinders? Well, again, that's how I mentioned on the sides. Uh, you can adjust the height of the cylinder. And the height of your cylinder, where you do want to have it set, is that when you have a 220 sandpaper on your, on your cylinder, on your drum, and you pass your piece of wood across it, it should be just like this here, where you have it just, just barely touching the cylinder. It probably wants to move it, but just doesn't quite. If I go where the tape is, uh, it's actually still too low there. So this is actually 80, so that tells me I definitely need to bring this up. Uh, this is an 80 grit, so it, it should be touching the cylinder when I'm going across. But ideally, you should set it up with a 220, and, and then adjust it so that it just just barely just touches the wood nice flat piece of wood going across Going across it. So this definitely needs to be adjusted and brought up and I'm going to do that right now Okay, so I couldn't find my socket wrench Anywhere, so I'm just going to use a monkey wrench here uh, But yeah, so essentially you just got to you just want to um, loosen these bolts here. Just give them a, you know, enough slack. Get your tape. And enough slack. Like so, so you're just a bit, you know, so I guess that's that one off. Just a bit too tight yet. So we'll loosen that up so you can see that it's now, got some play in it. I'll do the same on the other end. All right, so now I have both ends loose. We've got our piece of wood. And what I'm going to try and do now is to get it so that it actually um, will touch it. You see now you can see that it's definitely touching the piece of wood versus where it was, it was about, it was about there, actually it wasn't even there, I don't think, I think it, was, it wasn't even touching. So it was about there, so now I'm going to bring it up a little bit more. I, for, for the 80, I would say we want it just there. That's a good spot there, so I'm just going to tighten it by hand first here. I'll do the other end. Now this end here I have 60, so I'll just go over here. So you can see it's a bit lower on this end yet, so I'll have to bring that up. That's where I want. Okay. Now, we just need to tighten that up. Tighten one of up first here. Tighten up the other one. Check it again. Like it. All right. I'm I'm happy with that. Again, ideally, I should be using the 220, and then just we just want to hear that that touching. Well, let's give it a let's give it a try. Pretty good. I'll try to get a zoom in here. 
Okay, I'm going to put a, a pencil mark on the edge so you can I'll do it aggressively enough in this pine here. I don't have the vacuum hooked up so you'll see the dust, the, the sand, the uh, sawdust accumulate on the edge here but it's not blowing out all over the place until I get to the end and it just spits back of course but most of it ends up falling falling down into the uh, into the tray underneath. If I had the vacuum on it you definitely wouldn't be seeing any kind of dust coming on top here. So aggressive pencil marks. I'm going to turn it off. Do the flat edge as well. I'll put the pencil mark on there. I didn't, haven't sanded this yet. You see that there's some uh, imperfections in the wood here so we'll see how long that takes to come off when I put it through the sander. and clean now. Nice piece of wood. Nice and clean. Okay so that's how you adjust the height of the cylinder in the Flatmaster. Once you have it set there's no reason to keep adjusting up and down because that's not how you control the depth of the cut. So once you have it set just touching you might just have to readjust it like I did about every three to six months. So once that's set, uh, the only way to change the depth of cut, which was the other question, is how you, you know, do we, how do I adjust that, is actually just by changing the sandpaper. Uh, the higher the grit and, or lower the grit you use, the different, uh, you know, amount of wood that you're going to be taking off. Uh, because it does work a little bit different than an actual jointer that has knives. This just works, it's from a flat surface to the same height, flat surface on the other side. And it's only the sandpaper itself, so the more grit on the sandpaper, it'll take more wood off as you go past. So, um, essentially if you're doing like, this one's an 80 grit, it's about 22 thousandths of an inch that comes off. Uh, if you're doing like a 120 grit, I think it is, uh, yeah, 12. 12 thousandths of an inch and I have it written down because I can't remember uh, 180 you're about four thousandths of an inch and of course at 220 you're about two thousandths of an inch um, that you're taking off in each pass of course if you're going up to like a 400 grit then you're bound to about a thousandth of an inch so you'd really have to do quite a few passes to take wood off uh, but we find like I have a little section here that's 60 60 grit and that a lot of times we're just doing like the uh, edges, doing a quick edge cleanup for our projects. And, uh, and then of course we clean it up afterwards. And then for more of the flat surfaces, we have the 80 and we'll use that to, to do the cleanups of our, our flat edges. Um, yeah, so, so that's it. That's how you change the depth. So 
with this 30 inch, I could, and if you're only doing small pieces like this, which could fit in there, you could have different sections. You could have probably one, two, three, four, you know, maybe four to five different grits. You can go from your 60, 80, 120, <laughs> you know, 220. That's how you adjust the depth. Very, very simple concept. Uh, and check out our other video up up here, up there, I always forget, up here I think, <laughs> to uh, see how you change the sandpaper because you can change the sandpaper probably if once you get really accustomed to it, you know, within one minute. It's not too hard. They do come in strips like this here and it's Velcro. So you just start your, your, your sandpaper on there and you're just essentially rolling it on cutting it and, and I use tape just so that the tips don't stick up. Sometimes they end up, these little tips here tend to end up coming up off the Velcro because there's just not enough Velcro there to help hold it down. So we just put a bit of tape on there to hold it in place and that stays on there until the next change. So another question a uh, viewer had was whether or not you can use um, this flat master to sand large slabs of wood. I wouldn't recommend it the way it's set up now because it's you only have a very short out feed and in feed. It's only about six. I never measured it, but it's about six inches uh, before and after. So you know to manage a, a slab of wood on top will be quite uh, difficult. Um, I we I mean we definitely don't use it for larger pieces than that are about maybe four feet long. Uh, which I find is probably the limit to what we can manage to make sure that it's nice and flat here and then move it across uh, and usually it's just pine bores that we use it for. Um, I'll show you a little clip here from Stockroom Supply where they do use the fence with and where they actually extend the fence past full length fence like this uh, with the with a piece of wood underneath on each end. So that kind of gives you a little bit extra support, uh, extension for, for support, as well as using these, um, these wheels on the fence as well. So I, I, I'm not gonna make a whole setup for that, but I'll show you a clip because they do do it with the stockroom supply videos. So you have this like a, to hold, you can have a few of these wheels. I have a kit comes, comes with four of them. And uh, so you can extend your, your, your feed, in feed and out feed, with a little bit extra support from the fence uh, to about, you know, probably a good foot and a half uh, on each end. Uh, so that gives you a little bit extra support, but again, it's just a little bit of extra support with a little piece of wood underneath. So you're not getting a whole tabletop. I mean, that is the other option, is that you take this metal tabletop that's on here, and you make yourself, you know, a larger, you build it into a larger table uh, where you can have maybe two feet or whatnot uh, extension on both ends or even longer on the out feed. That's up to you. Uh, that okay, so other questions that viewers had, and it was a really good question, is whether or not you can put attachments onto the flat master. And the answer is yes. You, the shaft here on this end, the pulleys on that end, this is the other end of the shaft, uh, is elongated and sticking out and double checking yeah so this is the end that had, comes out and you can put a uh, sanding mop on there they do have attachments I'll show you images uh, from stockroom supply again we're not sponsors or anything like that uh, it's just that uh, that's where we got this machine from and they sell those attachments so you can get uh, sanding mops you can get a, a drill chuck that goes on there so essentially you could uh, attach anything that you would attach to a drill a drill chuck and uh, and put it at the end here uh, you know whether wire brush or sanding discs or whatever you can think of that would be another option to have a nice sanding disc make a table uh, adjustable table so you can use it as a sanding disc as well um, you could probably set it up with a belt <laughs> a belt sander etc etc uh, anything that you know turns you can put on there um, I'm thinking if I had the time and the space in this workshop, I would make myself a larger top for, for this. Again, having the in feed and out feed a little bit wider, but also put a secondary cylinder on this end and have it as, a, uh, as an under feed. So you would have best of both worlds where you'd have the flat master here at the top 
to do like jointer type of finishing. And then on the other side would be uh, underfeed, similar to a planer, and do the planing type of sanding on the underside. And that would be great, if you, especially if you also had an automatic feed uh, under, under here as well. Be all attached to the same motor. You would be able to do your sanding this way and then put it through at the end uh, on, on the overhead sander. So that would be uh, pretty cool if someone gets around to doing that, I would love to see it. So, uh, yeah. So, yeah, answer. Yes, you can put attachments on to the Flatmaster. All right, so I hope that answers a few questions uh, that were out there in regards to the Flatmaster. Again, I apologize that I didn't put more details in the first videos. Still learning this video stuff and trying to uh, <laughs> be more organized so that I have more of a, a proper sequence of information and full information or or at least doing portions at a time rather than to try to get it all in one video so learning process hopefully get there and and be able to serve uh, those viewers that are committed to watching our videos really appreciate it and if you haven't done so already we'd really appreciate it if you give us a thumbs up if you find that the information we provided here today was helpful and of course leave comments down below as i mentioned if you have one if you've done different attachments to it or done some modifications to it love to hear about it so please leave them down in the comments we answer all our comments and uh yeah and subscribe to our channel so that you'll get updates every time we do a new video and um, we'd love to see you back here so stay tuned we'll see you next time that's the workbench